mile upon mile of natural beauty. Land and sea sculpted by one of the harshest climates in the world. This is unique, untouched land, not owned, not exploited. This is Antarctica. Covering nearly 10% of the globe, it's protected by a treaty that ensures it's used for peaceful purposes only and in the interests of all mankind. Uh, the Antarctic became an area of international research in the um, 1950s with the first crossing of the Antarctic by the uh, Sir Vivian Fuchs and uh, Sir Edmund Hillary. Um, this was a period called the International Geophysical Year and it was out of the International Geophysical Year um, that the Antarctic Treaty grew. Signed in Washington, D.C. on the 1st of December in 1959, the treaty established the world's first international space by stating no claims to sovereignty could be made by the seven claimed sectors on the grounds of activity in the area. At the same time, it became the first nuclear arms agreement and today it's backed by 47 nations and at its core is science and the role it plays as a common interest amongst nations. Conservation is not just how you're going to protect animals, or that's, that's part of it. But for instance, um, freedom of exchange of information is very important to conservation because information is power. This is just one of hundreds of research stations. Scientists from all over the world work side by side in the interests of humanity. It's the key place to study climate change. The treaty is crucial not only for scientific research, but because it regulates all human activity including fishing and tourism. My main fear is that too many people with a commercial interest will start to be able to treat the Antarctic like just another place to make money. The Antarctic Treaty is a unique document in history. It's now recognised as one of the most successful international agreements ever negotiated and takes place alongside the Magna Carta in terms of man's quest for enlightenment and order. It exists in a time when on the other side of the globe, in the Arctic, superpowers fight to own and exploit resources. It would be wonderful if the world community could set aside the Arctic for peaceful purposes only, and that the nations in the Arctic could agree that that is a common interest, that they all have a common interest in managing the Arctic for peaceful purposes only. It's not an issue of economics, it's not an issue of environmental protection. It's an issue that crosses all of these uses and, and interactions. The Antarctic Treaty Summit, convening on the treaty's 50th anniversary, is to ensure the treaty stays in place. But it's also to showcase to the world an agreement in which sovereignty claims have been set aside. The lesson from the Antarctic Treaty is it matters not what your um, political system is, and it doesn't actually matter what your culture is because there are some fundamental principles um, about the way in which people want to live that can actually underpin the way in which governance functions for the common good. And the Antarctic Treaty is the best example that we've had so far of how to work together. Today, when the major challenges for civilization, climate change, depleted resources, are not national but global issues, there's ever increasing pressure to find a new model for governance the Antarctic Treaty could be it.